Welcome to Toyota Material Handling USA's Operator Safety Training Program for Class 1, 4, and 5 powered industrial trucks. This Class 1, 4, and 5 Operator Safety Training is designed to provide general instruction on safe lift truck operation and general safety awareness. Federal law requires that anyone operating a powered industrial truck be fully trained and employer authorized for the specific class of lift truck they will use. This training program is designed for class 1, 4, and 5 powered industrial trucks. Every job operation and every work environment differs from company to company and even within departments of companies. Ultimately, it is the employer's responsibility to ensure the operator is properly trained, evaluated, and certified. This is only the classroom portion of the powered industrial truck operator training. Additional hands-on and evaluation portions must be completed to become certified. Throughout this training, powered industrial trucks will be referred to generically as lift trucks. There is only one objective to the classroom portion of this training program, and that is to familiarize you with information on proper and safe powered industrial truck operation. Let's get started. A powered industrial truck is defined by ASME as any mobile, power-propelled truck used to carry, push, pull, lift, stack, or tier material. All powered industrial trucks are divided into seven classifications. Class 1 industrial trucks are classified as electric motor rider trucks. Class 2 industrial trucks are classified as electric motor narrow aisle trucks. Class 3 industrial trucks are classified as electric motor hand trucks. Class 4 industrial trucks consist of all internal combustion engine trucks, cushion tires only. Class 5 industrial trucks consist of all internal combustion engine trucks, pneumatic tires only. Class 6 industrial trucks are classified as electric and internal combustion engine tractors. Class 7 industrial trucks are classified as rough terrain forklift trucks. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, Revised Regulation 29 CFR 1910.178, effective December 1, 1999. These regulations stipulate only trained and authorized personnel shall be permitted to operate a powered industrial truck. OSHA believes that improper or unsafe operation of a powered industrial truck is the major cause of accidents, fatalities, and injuries. NIOSH states operator training can reduce lift truck related accidents by as much as 70 percent. OSHA's revision requires that all powered industrial truck operators shall receive training that consists of formal instruction, practical training, and evaluation of the operator's performance in the workplace. Operators must be trained on the type of truck or trucks they operate on the job, must be trained in the environments in which they work, must demonstrate demonstrate competency on each type of vehicle operated in their work environment and shall be evaluated and certified in both functions by a qualified person or persons. Refresher training is required if the operator is involved in an accident or near accident, observed operating the vehicle in an unsafe manner, determined during an evaluation to need additional training in a workplace where the physical environment has undergone changes that could affect safe operation of the truck, assigned to operate a different type of truck, or at least once every three years. Under subsection L, paragraph 6 of 1910.178, the employer shall certify that each operator has been trained and evaluated on a variety of truck-related and workplace-related topics. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration's Powered Industrial Truck Standards apply to operators in these work environments. This program is designed to meet and exceed OSHA Standard 1910.178. If your state has its own OSHA-approved Occupational Safety and Health Plan, you should review that plan for any additional requirements not outlined here. Each lift truck should have an operator's manual available for reference. 
This manual provides specific information for the operation of that specific lift truck. There may also be specific warnings or precautions for operating your lift truck or attachment, such as those shown here. These warnings or precautions might be found in the operator's manual, attachment manual, or posted on the lift truck. Before operating your truck, read and understand the operator's manual and any precautions or warnings posted on the lift truck. The operator shall not, under any circumstances, place arms or legs into the mast, outside the running lines of the truck, or between the mast and overhead guard. Doing so may result in serious injury or death. Although similar in their operation, lift trucks are significantly different from automobiles. Lift trucks operate on a variety of surfaces from smooth and level to rocky and uneven. Automobiles are designed to operate on asphalt and gravel roadbeds. Lift trucks are equipped with forks, clamps, poles, or other attachments designed to move material weighing thousands of pounds. Automobiles are not designed to take similar attachments. Automobiles cannot carry heavy loads at one end of the vehicle. A car has even distribution of weight. The lift truck does not. Typically, lift trucks steer using the rear wheels and use front wheel drive. There are, however, exceptions. Please see your operator's manual for details. Automobiles steer using the front wheels and can use either front or rear wheel drive. Lift trucks steer differently than automobiles and often have a very tight turning radius. Lift trucks steer with the rear tire or tires, so you need to compensate for tail swing when you drive. The rear of the automobile, unlike the lift truck, does not swing out. Steering for a lift truck is from the rear, and the wheel turning capacity allows for an extremely tight turning radius. Unlike automobiles, not all lift trucks are equipped with four wheels. The lift truck operator's visibility is more restricted when carrying a large load than the operator of an automobile. The steering wheel, horn, accelerator pedal, brake pedal, parking brake lever, and key switch all operate in a manner similar to a car. However, some lift trucks use an optional foot directional pedal. The pedal is divided into two parts. One side will move the truck forward, the other side will move the truck rearward. Lift trucks also have hydraulic controls for forks, or attachments and other mast functions not found in automobiles. And lift trucks do not differ from automobiles in operation only, but weight as well. The average lift truck with load can weigh as much as six automobiles. The weight difference between a lift truck and an automobile is substantial. This difference demands an alert operator who is serious about understanding how to properly use a lift truck. More information concerning your truck's specific controls and instrumentation will be discussed during the hands-on portion of the certification process of your training. In general, the operator's compartment might contain the following controls. A forward and reverse directional lever, a parking brake, a foot brake, an accelerator pedal, a horn, a steering wheel, and hydraulic control levers. Please refer to the operator manual for specific instruction on your truck's hydraulic controls or truck-specific operations. On most trucks, the first lever activates the lift and lower control of the forks and mast. The second lever activates the mast tilt, and the third and or fourth lever work as auxiliary function for attachments, like side shifters or clamps. All attachments require specialized training before you may use them. The instrument panel varies upon the type, model, and year of the lift truck. Refer to your specific truck owner's manual for additional information. All lift trucks are required to be identified by a securely fastened and legible nameplate. It will tell you how much the truck weighs, how high it can lift, and how much it can lift depending on the load center. The approximate weight is the weight of the lift truck without a load. The maximum lift height is dictated by the mast configuration. The load weight capacity will decrease as the load center increases. The mast and back tilt refers to the type of mast equipped on the lift truck and the maximum amount of back tilt in degrees. The attachment notation indicates if the nameplate reflects capacity with an attachment. The tire size is listed to ensure the proper replacement tires are installed to meet capacity ratings. This truck weighs 10,830 pounds and can lift a load up to 187 inches high. The load maximum is 6,000 pounds when the load center is 20 inches.
For the electric powered lift truck to handle its rated capacity, the battery cannot fall outside the minimum or maximum battery weight requirements indicated on the nameplate. The maximum weight of the battery must not be exceeded or damage could occur to the lift truck. Putting a heavier battery into the truck will not increase the lift capacity. Installing a heavier battery than specified could in fact decrease lifting capacity. The truck weight without the battery is the approximate weight of the truck without a battery. The battery will have its weight stamped on the case and adding this to the truck weight will provide the total weight of the vehicle. For all trucks manufactured after May 1, 2001, new nameplates are required. There are significant changes to the nameplates. When a truck is fitted with side shifting attachments, having a substantial offset, the nameplate will include information on offset loading. Tire pressure is also shown in kilo pascals and or pounds per square inch if the tires are pneumatic. Capacity, approximate weight, and front tread is given in both U.S. and metric measurements. For electric trucks, the battery minimum and maximum weight is given in pounds and kilograms. You must understand the basic principles of balance to keep all the wheels of the lift truck on the ground. The heavy counterweight on the back of the lift truck keeps the rear wheels on the ground. As you can see, the front wheels act as a fulcrum between the counterweight and the load, just like the pivot point of a teeter-totter. Different load shapes and different load weights will affect the balance of a lift truck. For example, these three loads are all the same weight, but because of their different shapes, there is a different center of gravity or balance point for each one. When a lift truck picks up a load, the center of gravity of the truck and the center of gravity of the load produce the combined center of gravity. The combined center of gravity moves in the same direction of the load. When taking on a load, the combined center of gravity of the lift truck moves forward from under the operator towards the front axle. A load that is too heavy can make a lift truck unstable and result in the rear wheel coming off the ground. A typical counterbalance lift truck has a three-point suspension system between the front wheels and the middle of the rear axle. The rear axle pivots at a single point in the center of the axle to compensate for uneven floors. The stability triangle also has a third dimension, and that is height. This forms a three-dimensional triangle, similar to a pyramid. When the combined center of gravity stays nearer to the center of this pyramid, the truck is stable. But if the center of gravity is moved to the edges of this pyramid, because the load is too heavy or too high, the truck will tip over, either forward or on its side. Keeping a truck from tipping forward toward the load is called maintaining longitudinal stability. Keeping a truck from tipping sideways during a turn is called maintaining lateral stability. As this lift truck turns with a load, the combined center of gravity moves toward the edge of the triangle. Now watch what happens during a similar turn, this time with no load. See how the center of gravity is much closer to the edge of the triangle? The closer it is, the less it takes for the truck to become unbalanced and tip over. This demonstrates how the combined center of gravity works to make a lift truck with a load more stable than a truck without a load. That's why, load or no load, you should be careful when cornering your lift truck. Tilting a raised load forward or back will move the center of gravity of the load forward or back. Raising and tilting a load can cause the truck's center of gravity to move out of the stability triangle and tip the truck over. Caution must be exercised when tilting the mast while the load is being raised. Notice how the top of the stability triangle becomes very narrow, causing the center of gravity to move outside the triangle if the mast is tilted excessively. Some factors that can shift the center of gravity of the lift truck are you stop and unload. You stop your lift truck quickly. Your lift truck is loaded on the right side and you turn left. Your truck is loaded on the left side and you turn right. Your lift truck is loaded and you raise the load with the mast tilted back. To help you maintain stability, it is important to know where the load center is located. The load center is the distance from the face of the forks to the center of gravity of the load. Here is a 5,000-pound truck with a 24-inch load center. The truck attempts to lift 5,000 pounds. It can't. The unusual shape places the load center of gravity at 30 inches from the face of the forks. The rear wheels lift off the ground. The truck's capacity has been exceeded. That same load lifted from the opposite direction gets better results. Now the center of gravity is only 18 inches from the face of the forks. 
Now the load can be safely lifted and moved. Because loads come in all different shapes, sizes, and weights, it's very important to know the weight, load center, and characteristics of every load you carry. If a sit-down counterbalance lift truck should tip over, stay inside the compartment. It is the best chance for survival. Brace your feet, hold on to the steering wheel with both hands, and lean in the opposite direction of the fall. If you are not wearing your seatbelt or try to jump clear of the tipping truck, you may be struck and crushed by the overhead guard. If a Class 1 stand-up lift truck begins to tip over laterally, the operator must step off the vehicle toward the rear of the vehicle. It is recommended that operators step off of the rear of and away from the truck in order to minimize the risk of injury. Lift trucks steer differently than automobiles and often have a very tight turning radius. Lift trucks steer with the rear tire or tires, so you need to compensate for tail swing when you drive. Every operator should be aware of the distance needed between the front wheels and the tail to make a safe turn without any contact with materials, other trucks, or pedestrians. When reaching the corner, bring the front left wheel to the turning point and turn the steering wheel to the left point on which the back of the lift truck will swing. The rear wheels will turn to the right, swinging the back of the truck in a counterclockwise direction away from the turn direction. As the truck reaches the new direction, turn the steering wheel to align the back wheels with the front wheels. The lift truck is now traveling in a new direction. Because of the location of the center of gravity with varying loads or without a load, sharp turns at a high rate of speed are not recommended. Operators are more likely to travel faster when driving without a load. Remember, a lift truck is less stable without a load. It's important to always use slow and smooth maneuvers when operating a lift truck. This will help keep your center of gravity inside the stability triangle and keep all of your wheels safely on the ground. Always lower the forks or attachment before traveling. Never travel with a load raised. Driving a lift truck at excessive speed can result in loss of control, causing the vehicle to skid, tip over, or fall off a loading dock or other elevated surface. This condition can be made more dangerous because the load being carried sometimes partially obscures the operator's vision. An out-of-control vehicle can strike an employee, run into a column or other part of the building, or strike other material that in turn injures another employee. It is important to follow some basic rules in maneuvering your lift truck. When making a turn, reduce speed to a safe level and turn the steering wheel in a smooth, sweeping motion. Only handle stable or safely arranged loads. Never move a load outside the truck's rated capacity. Even when not handling a load, operate a lift truck with an attachment as if it is partially loaded. Trucks shall not be driven up to anyone standing in front of a bench or other fixed object. Personnel could be injured or killed if trapped and crushed between the truck and a fixed object. All traffic regulations shall be observed, including authorized plant speed limits. A safe distance of approximately three truck lengths from the truck ahead or behind will be maintained at all times. The truck shall be kept under control at all times. Driving over objects on the operating surface shall be avoided. When operating a powered industrial truck, the operator must understand the potential hazards of obstructed visibility. There are many things that can impede visibility, such as loads on forks, overhead guard, mirrors, fire extinguishers, lights, cardboard and plywood on overhead guard, lift chains, hoses and masts, narrow aisles, shelving, racks, building columns, blind intersections, tractor trailers, housekeeping, offices, and pedestrians. If you are carrying a large load that blocks your forward view, travel carefully in reverse or use a person to guide you. Use all of your field of view to guide yourself. There are four common types of masts used on high lift trucks. They are commonly referred to as limited free lift, full free lift, three stage, and four stage. A five stage mast is also available on some trucks. For more information, refer to the operator's training manual and the hands-on portion of your training. There are three basic fork types, pallet, polished and tapered, and plywood. The forks you use should always be shorter than or the same length of the load you're handling. Forks that protrude beyond the load could damage another load when you're stacking. On the other hand, if the forks are too short, you'll be operating under unstable conditions. The general rule for fork length 
is that the fork should extend at least two-thirds the length of the load. You can use a fork extension to handle long loads, but you must make sure you have a nameplate to use this attachment. Fork extensions should be no longer than 150% of the supporting fork's length. They slide over the regular forks for added length. For more information, refer to the operator's training manual and the hands-on portion of your training. Attachments allow the lift truck to lift and carry specialized loads. These specialized loads might be large paper rolls, dumping bins, carpet rolls, unpalleted moving boxes, or drums. Modifications and additions to a lift truck which could affect its capacity and safe operation shall not be performed by the customer or user without manufacturer's prior written approval. Please review the operator manual for proper operation of any specialized attachment. These specialized forks will also have capacity ratings and load center requirements you must be familiar with before operating the lift truck. Attachments affect the capacity rating of a lift truck in two ways. First, the lost load center. Since the attachment hangs onto the carriage, it moves the load away from the truck. This increases the load center and decreases the capacity of the truck. Second, the weight of the attachment. This decreases the net capacity of the truck. The weight can be from a couple of hundred pounds to thousands of pounds. When an attachment is added to the lift truck, prior written permission of the manufacturer must be obtained and a new nameplate must be requested from the manufacturer and affixed to the truck immediately. Remember, hands-on training of any special lift truck attachments must be completed before certification. Lift trucks are used in almost all material handling industries. Because of their design, lift trucks have virtually unrestricted movement throughout the workplace. Different models of lift trucks bring with them different operating limits. Safe operation of a lift truck can be limited by a number of factors – weight capacity, height limitations, surface grades, work environment, aisle width, and presence of hazardous materials can all limit the operation of a lift truck. Many accidents have occurred because of operating a lift truck beyond its limit. For example, employees have fallen from trucks and been injured when riding on the forks. Accidents have occurred when an operator has attempted to drive with an obstructed view in the direction of travel and has run into another employee. When using a lift truck on a freight dock or rail dock, the truck shall not be used for opening or closing freight doors. To use a truck for any purpose other than that for which it was intended will endanger the safety of the operator and co-workers. The environment from workplace to workplace and application to application can be totally different. The employer, not the lift truck manufacturer, has decided if additional accessories are needed and, if so, if they are the proper type of accessories. If a lift truck rotates through several different work environments, it is the employer's responsibility to ensure the proper accessories are installed and working. Additional lift truck accessories might include travel and backup alarms, flashing, strobing or rotating lights, and mirrors. In some cases, additional accessories could invite operators to drive in an unsafe manner. Backup alarms, flashing lights, strobing lights, rotating beacons, and rear view mirrors could have detrimental effects. Operators could depend on accessories to clear pedestrians from the lift truck path rather than looking in the direction of travel. Multiple alarms from different lift trucks can create confusion and increased noise levels. Lights can reflect to create confusion or fatigue. Rearview mirrors can distort both images and depth perception. In addition, the constant presence of alarms and lights could render the warning meaningless. If an operator disconnects or disables any accessory, the safety standards of the work environment will be compromised. When assessing specific workplace safety requirements, it is strongly recommended that a safety professional familiar with the user's type of industrial setting is consulted. Toyota provides a copy of the Toyota Accessories brochure with each new lift truck purchase and on the website www.toyotaforklift.com. This brochure also contains information on worldwide web addresses for ANSI and OSHA. Uneven work surfaces are dangerous. You must be alert at all times. And in the event of a tip over, your seatbelt will remind you to stay inside the operator compartment. Always wear your seatbelt. 
Powered industrial trucks may operate on almost any type of surface, from smooth and level floors to rocky, uneven ground and surfaces not having an excessive slope. Be familiar with the type of surface on which you will operate. Bumps, rough terrain, uneven surfaces and debris require extra caution while operating the lift truck. Sweep away debris and clean floors to prevent accidents. The floor must be maintained in a clean and, if possible, dry condition. Wet floors can greatly reduce and sometimes completely disable steering and braking capacity. Drive slowly. It is the responsibility of the operator to ensure a load is properly and neatly stacked and, where applicable, secured. If a load is misstacked, restack it before loading or moving the material. Place the heaviest objects nearest the bottom of the load. Don't stack a heavy load on top of fragile materials. Round objects should be blocked. If the stack area is not level, approach from the downhill side and the truck must be level laterally before the load is raised. It is the responsibility of the operator to know the capacity and gross weight of the loaded truck, the composition and weight of the load, and if it can be stacked. Additional weight should never be placed on the rear of the lift truck or the counterweight to increase lifting capacity. Lift trucks should be used only for the rated capacity they were designed to carry. It is very important to know the characteristics of every load you are carrying. When any pedestrians are around lift trucks, the operator must stay alert. Keep pedestrians well away from the lift truck at all times. It is your responsibility to know and understand your company's pedestrian policy. However, be aware. At blind intersections, stop the truck. Look in all directions for pedestrians and other things that may cause an accident. Sound the horn before proceeding. Use convex mirrors or spotters where conditions dictate. And always proceed with caution. For additional training on pedestrian safety, please refer to Toyota's Pedestrian Safety Program. Lift trucks are specifically designated for operation in hazardous areas. The employer should provide the properly classified lift truck for your work environment. For additional information, refer to National Fire Protection Agency, NFPA 505. Ramps and other sloped surfaces are dangerous areas for lift trucks. Lift trucks operated on a ramp must always move straight up and down the ramp, never turn on a ramp or travel at an angle. In general, when the lift truck has a load, reverse going downhill and drive forward going uphill. When the truck does not have a load, drive forward going downhill and reverse going uphill. Safe operation of a lift truck on ramps and slopes will be covered in more detail later in this training. It is important to recognize the symptoms of carbon monoxide exposure. Low exposures cause slight headaches. As concentrations increase, weakness and dizziness may occur. High exposures can cause nausea, vomiting, confusion, collapse, coma, and even death. If you suspect carbon monoxide poisoning, don't wait for symptoms to worsen. Headaches or dizziness during operation should be reported immediately. You can reduce the risk of carbon monoxide exposure by ensuring proper air exchange, regular maintenance on the facility's ventilation equipment, proper maintenance of lift trucks, and maintenance of other equipment that may emit carbon monoxide. Untrained personnel or workers with an indifferent attitude can be dangerous. People stepping into your path, engaging in horseplay, or making an error in judgment increase the potential for accidents. Materials that are unstackable, are stacked too high, are bulky and block vision, or are unevenly distributed can lead to accidents. Pallets are a fire hazard. A defective, cracked, or loose pallet is dangerous. Inadequate maintenance or design differences of equipment can be dangerous to an operator. Equipment used for the wrong job or having visibility restrictions or lacking important safety markings are hazardous. When working in a narrow aisle or restricted space, know the width of the load before entering the workspace. Also, some work environments might require hard hats while operating in that particular area. For outdoor operations, the weather can also present a hazard. Other unique or potentially hazardous environmental conditions can be site-specific things such as construction in a working facility, overhead cranes, furnaces, forging hammers and presses, and welding operations. One important item you should remember is to never lift a person with your lift truck. Toyota does not approve of any personnel baskets being installed on lift trucks.
When you're traveling with a load, your forks should remain no more than four inches off the ground. And don't let pedestrians ride on your truck. There are significant differences between Toyota lift trucks equipped with the system of active stability and conventional brand lift trucks. The system of active stability is the world's first electronic control system that automatically monitors over 3,000 key forklift functions. SAS then reacts to reduce the chances of a tip over when instability is detected. The system of active stability monitor will show the activation of the swing lock cylinder and alert the operator should the SAS ever malfunction. Trucks with SAS are also equipped with an active mast function controller, which has several key functions. One of these functions is the forward tilt angle control. This function improves material handling stability by controlling the amount of forward mast tilt that is safely allowed when lifting a load. Another function of the active mast function controller is the rear tilt speed control. It makes sure that mast rear tilt speed is slow at high heights and quicker at low heights. The automatic fork leveling control function makes load handling safe and easy by allowing the mast to automatically align so the forks are horizontal. This is done by pressing the tilt lever knob switch. SAS will reduce the potential for a tip over, but it will not prevent all tip overs. Drivers who operate both SAS and non-SAS trucks must not operate non-SAS trucks in the same manner as trucks equipped with SAS. Non-SAS trucks will handle and operate differently. There are over one million lift trucks in operation in the United States, with the majority of lift trucks having more than one operator. Two-thirds of all powered industrial trucks will be involved in some type of accident. In the United States, between 1995 and 1999, an average of 119 people have been killed due to powered industrial trucks. OSHA and Toyota believe that many of these accidents can be avoided with proper training. OSHA's new safety training requirements are estimated to reduce fatalities by 10 percent, while saving employers millions in direct and indirect costs. The primary causes of fatalities involve being struck by a falling object, overturned lift trucks, struck by a vehicle, falls, getting caught in equipment, a fall from the truck, and having the vehicle strike a stationary to avoid an accident, then by fully understanding how your lift truck works and how it doesn't. Lift truck safety is a serious responsibility. Remember, accidents can happen anytime, anywhere, and to anyone. Gasoline, LPG, diesel, and compressed natural gas, CNG, are all used to power internal combustion engines. When fueling a gasoline or diesel-powered lift truck, follow these steps. First, ensure the proper type of fuel is being used for the equipment. Refer to the lift truck owner's manual if not certain. Also, report any defective refueling equipment to your supervisor immediately. Turn off the engine. Ensure there is no smoking, sparks, or other sources that could ignite the fuel. Open the fuel cap and feed the nozzle into the fuel tank opening. Turn on the pump and begin fueling. Never fill the tank completely since it could spill over while driving. Do not overfill the tank or allow fuel to leak onto the ground. When done fueling, turn off the pump, return the fuel nozzle, put the cap back on. Use a clean cloth to clean any overspill. When fueling an LPG-powered lift truck, follow these steps. Always begin the refueling by putting on the right safety gear. To properly refuel your LP fuel truck, make sure your parking brake is set and your forks are lowered. The transmission should be in neutral. Leave the motor running. With a gloved hand, shut off the LP cylinder valve and let the truck stall for a lack of fuel. Turn the key switch off. Uncouple the hose from the valve. Remove the tank and store outside in a safe and approved area. Handle the new tank with care. Inspect the tank. Check for date of manufacture or the last valid inspection date, which should be 10 years or less. Put the tank on the locating pin and set it in the propane gas tank bracket. The pressure relief valve should always point upwards and secure the tank. Connect the hose to the valve. Open the valve slowly and look 
listen, and smell for leaks. Leaking liquid propane gas can cause serious frost burns. Sometimes frost can be seen around the area where gas is escaping. Make sure the tank is secure and you're ready to roll. Pre-operational safety checks are required by law and must be completed daily or prior to every shift. Refer to your company's pre-operational inspection and maintenance forms. Those contained here are for demonstration purposes only. Daily checklists in a pad form for use by operators are available directly from your Toyota dealer. We recommend you wear gloves during this inspection to prevent hand injuries. Eye protection is also recommended to prevent inadvertent fluid splash or metal splinters from damaging the operator's eyes. Please ensure the forks are lowered, parking brakes set, and the lift truck is shut off before beginning this part of the inspection. With an LPG truck, you'll begin at the LP cylinder. First, inspect the bracket and ensure the cylinder is properly secured. Make sure the locating pin is in place and the pressure relief valve is pointing upwards. Inspect the hose. It should not be frayed, pinched, kinked, or bound in any way. Also, the connector must be properly threaded and tightened. Open the valve slowly. Look, listen, and smell for leaks. Check your fuel level. If you notice a leak, close the LP valve and report the problem immediately. Next, check the left rear tire. Look for debris around the tire and check the tire for damage and wear, and also check the rims for bending. Ensure all lug nuts are in place and secured. If your truck has pneumatic tires, check the air pressures as outlined in the operator's manual. An underinflated tire will cause the truck to lean to one side and will decrease stability. Check the seat belt. Now, the engine compartment. Inspect the battery. Check the oil level and radiator fluid. Inspect the overhead guard for broken welds, missing bolts, or damaged areas. Check the front left tire. Next, check the tilt cylinder for damage or leaks. Check the carriage. Check the fork locking pin. It should always be in place and locked. Inspect the fork. Forks that are 10% worn mean a 20% reduction in load capacity and must be replaced. Check the mast assembly. Look for broken welds, cracked or bent areas, and worn or missing stops. If using a backrest extension, inspect it to make sure it's in place and secure. Check the lift cylinder for excessive oil. Check the lift chains for equal tension to ensure even lifting. Check the lift rollers for wear, damage, kinks, or for any sign that lubrication is required. Make sure the mass channel is free of foreign objects. If this lift truck has an attachment other than forks, please refer to the attachment owner operator manual. For example, this lift truck has a side shifter. Inspect the attachment and ensure that specific attachment is listed on the nameplate. Remember, all nameplates must be securely fastened to the lift truck. Now, inspect the right side of the truck. Inspect the fork, fork locking pin, and other side of the carriage. Next, the tilt cylinder and then the front tire. Next, inspect the right side of the engine compartment. Check the transmission fluid and hydraulic oil. Ensure the air filter is clean and inspect the fan belt. Check the right side of the overhead guard and the right rear tire. Close the engine hood and, if needed, secure the LP tank bracket. With your seatbelt on, start the engine. Check the gauges and listen for unusual noises as the engine warms up. Test the parking brake. The truck should not be capable of movement when the parking brake is engaged. Check the lifting controls by raising and lowering the forks. Check both forward and rearward tilt control. When the forks are lowered, test the side shifter, if it is installed on your lift truck, and load handling attachments for smooth movement. Release the parking brake and drive forward. Check for acceleration, steering, and braking. Drive in reverse. Check acceleration, steering, and braking. Turn on the lights and ensure they are operational. Check the horn. Park the truck and inspect for any oil spots on the floor. Finally, complete and file your operator checklist. If during the pre-operational check you note any problems, or if while on the job you notice anything that makes your truck unsafe, park it, remove the keys, 
tag it out of operation, and report the problems immediately to your supervisor. Operational safety checks are required by law and must be completed daily or prior to every shift. Refer to your company's pre-operational inspection and maintenance forms. Those contained here are for demonstration purposes only. Daily checklists in a pad form for use by operators are available directly from your Toyota dealer. We recommend you wear gloves during this inspection to prevent hand injuries. Eye protection is also recommended to prevent inadvertent fluid splash or metal splinters from damaging the operator's eyes. Please ensure the forks are lowered, parking brakes set, and the lift truck is shut off before beginning this part of the inspection. Inspect the battery. Check vent caps, connector covers, and cables. Close the battery hood and check the seat belt. Next, check the left rear tire. Look for debris around the tire and check the tire for damage and wear, and also check the rims for bending. If your truck has pneumatic tires, check the air pressures as outlined in the operator's manual. An underinflated tire will cause the truck to lean to one side and will decrease stability. Inspect the overhead guard for broken welds, missing bolts, or damaged areas. Check the front left tire. Next, check the tilt cylinder for damage or leaks. Check the carriage. Check the fork locking pin. It should be in place and locked. Inspect the fork. Forks that are 10% worn mean a 20% reduction in load capacity and must be replaced. Check the mast assembly. Look for broken welds, cracked or bent areas, and worn or missing stops. If using a backrest extension, inspect it to make sure it's in place and secure. Check the lift cylinder for excessive oil. Check the lift chains for equal tension to ensure even lifting. Check the lift rollers for wear, damage, kinks, or for any sign that lubrication is required. Make sure the mass channel is free of foreign objects. If this lift truck has an attachment other than forks, please refer to the attachment owner operator manual for proper installation and inspection information. For example, this lift truck has a side shifter. Inspect the attachment and ensure that specific attachment is listed on the nameplate. Remember, all nameplates must be securely fastened to the lift truck. Now inspect the right side of the truck. Inspect the fork, fork locking pin, and other side of the carriage. Next, the tilt cylinder and then the front tire. Check the hydraulic oil. Check the connector. Check the right side of the overhead guard and the right rear tire. With your seat belt on, turn the key switch on. Check the gauges and listen for unusual noises. Test the parking brake. The truck should not be capable of movement when the parking brake is engaged. Check the lifting controls by raising and lowering the forks. Check both forward and rearward tilt control. When the forks are lowered, test the side shifter, if it is installed on your lift truck, and load handling attachments for smooth movement. Release the parking brake and drive forward. Check for acceleration, steering, and braking. Drive in reverse. Check for acceleration, steering, and braking. Turn on the lights and ensure they are operational. Check the horn. Park the truck and inspect for any oil spots on the floor. Finally, complete and file your operator checklist. If during the pre-operational check you note any problems, or if while on the job you notice anything that makes your truck unsafe, park it, remove the keys, tag it out of operation, and report the problems immediately to your supervisor. It is your responsibility to understand all truck-related and workplace-related safety issues that can affect safe lift truck operation. Safe operation of a lift truck means different things in different work environments. However, there are some basic personal protective precautions the operator should take to ensure they are safe as possible while using a lift truck. Safety shoes, goggles, or safety glasses, and in some cases hard hats, go with the job. If these items are needed in your work environment, do not get into your truck without them. Refer to ANSI 358.1 for proper placement and setup of eyewash and shower stations. And remember, do not engage the lift truck until you have securely fastened your seatbelt. Getting on and off a lift truck improperly can result in serious injury. Always keep your hands and feet inside the compartment. Never place them on the overhead guard. It could lead to serious injury. 
Use the three-point system when you enter or exit a lift truck. These three points of contact must consist of your hands and feet. And remember, do not engage the lift truck until you have securely fastened your seatbelt. Lift trucks used in railroad work environments are required only at approved railway tracks, remembering to look both ways before crossing. When crossing railway tracks, angle your truck and drive slowly and carefully, crossing over one wheel at a time to stay in balance. Crossing head-on can make your lift truck unstable. When operating in a work environment using railroad transportation, be aware of your surroundings at all times. When approaching an intersection or a corner, always reduce speed. If it is a blind corner, stop the lift truck, honk your horn, use a spotter or a convex mirror to ensure it is safe to proceed. Sometimes a noisy warehouse prevents others from hearing your approaching signals. At intersections, stop and look for crossing traffic. Use your horn to signal and proceed when you see the path is clear. Use aisleway mirrors to check the path and always look behind you before backing up. Don't rely on your truck mirrors. You can see much better by looking behind you before you go. Don't always assume you are seen. Make eye contact with others to assure they are aware of your presence. Operation on ramps or inclines requires special attention. Brakes should be tested and speed reduced before descending. Where applicable, the correct gear should be used for the load being transported. No person shall be permitted to walk down ramps ahead of the truck. Extreme caution is required when operating near the edge of ramps or docks. The operator will always travel straight up and straight down ramps. Never attempt to turn the vehicle while on a ramp. The operator will always transport the load on the upside of a ramp or grade. For example, a lift truck carrying a load should be driven up and back down a ramp or grade. The reverse is applied to empty trucks. For example, an empty truck should be backed up a ramp and driven down the ramp. For stand-up, counterbalance electric trucks that are loaded, the load goes down the ramp first because of the center of gravity. Some trucks do not, under any circumstance, use ramps. Please check the operator manual for more details on your particular truck. When traveling up a ramp and a load obstructs the forward view, a spotter must be in complete view of the operator at all times. When you're done driving, park your lift truck in a designated area, put the truck in neutral, Lower the forks or attachment to the floor, engage the parking brake, and shut the power off. The operator may now remove the seatbelt and exit the truck. Lift trucks should be parked away from aisles, doorways, railway tracks, fire lanes, or fire equipment. Correct parking is critical when stopped near elevators, ramps, or docks. Parking in this case will be done parallel with the edge. If necessary to park on an incline, the wheels must be blocked. For LPG-powered trucks, close the tank valve to prevent leaking. For electric trucks, disconnect the battery connector. Before using any attachment, you must be certified in its use. If you have any questions on the specifications and operation of the attachment, please refer to the user's manual. Lift trucks can be equipped with or can be modified to accept attachments that permit the truck to move odd-shaped material or carry out tasks that may not have been envisioned when the truck was designed and manufactured. For instructional purposes, this example will look at lifting and placing a load using forks. First, make sure the path is clear and tell anyone standing nearby to move back. To load materials, approach the load squarely with the forks level. Before you pick up the load, make sure your forks are spread as far apart as necessary for maximum support of the load. Also, make sure the forks are long enough to stabilize the load. The forks must be at least two-thirds as long as the length of the load to keep it balanced. Your load should be against the load backrest with the mast at a slight backward tilt to stabilize it. Make sure the load is stable before you move it. Don't pick up the load until you've come to a complete stop and are in a good position to make a lift. Load should not be shifted by budding with the truck. Pull back away from the rack or stack and slowly lower the load until between 4 and 6 inches off the ground. Before lifting a load, look up for overhead hazards like sprinklers or heating systems. Raise your load. When it's in position, tilt the mast so the pallet is level. Now, slowly lower the load until it rests in position. Reverse the truck until the forks are clear. Stop the truck and then lower the mast until the forks are approximately 4 to 6 inches off the ground. 
These same principles of lifting and moving a load apply to any attachments added to the truck. However, see the operator's manual for complete information on safe operation. An overhead guard shall be used as protection against falling objects. Never lift or lower your load or the attachment while the lift truck is moving. Lift trucks should only be used for weight for which they are designed to carry. If the load is over your lift truck's capacity, you'll have to break it down into smaller loads or use another truck with the right load capacity. When traveling, if you notice your load becoming unstable, stop and shut off your truck, put the controls in neutral, and put on the parking brake. Now get out and make your adjustments. Under no circumstance are you to reach through the mass to adjust a load. While traveling, keep your acceleration, braking, and turn smooth and fluid to minimize the risk of losing the load. If the load obstructs your view, drive in reverse or use a spotter. Make sure the path is clear by turning while you drive. Also, remember that no person shall be allowed to stand or pass under the elevated portion of any truck, whether loaded or empty. Toyota recommends lift truck operators ensure that trailers are safe for loading or unloading. A well-lighted work environment will help you identify potential problems. Proper housekeeping will reduce potential hazards and improve visibility. When the trailer is secure, carefully position the dock leveler in place. Make sure the dock leveler or dock plate is in good condition and free of debris and anything that could make the surface slick. Inspect the floor of the trailer. Always make sure the chocks are installed or the trailer is secured by the dock lock. One of the most common forms of trailer separation is trailer creep. As the lift truck travels on and off the trailer, its momentum inches the trailer away from the dock. You can prevent trailer creep by making sure wheel chocks are properly used and that the tractor trailer brakes are applied. Wheel chocks have their limitations and could move if they are used on ice, gravel, or sand. Make sure the combined weight of the lift truck and the load doesn't exceed the maximum weight capacity of the trailer. Always make sure a detached trailer is safe for loading or unloading. Your life could depend on it. Check the landing gear. Make sure it's free of corrosion or weak areas. If the trailer is in bad shape, it can collapse under the weight and forward motion of your lift truck. Trailer upending happens when heavy loads are located in the nose of the trailer. Uncoupled trailers must be secured with a support jack or fixed jacks before you enter with a lift truck. One of the most common causes of dock accidents is early departure. That's when a tractor trailer driver assumes that loading or unloading is complete and pulls away from the dock while the lift truck is entering or leaving the trailer. Review your company's policy on ensuring against early departures. Wheel chocks aren't always enough. Lift truck operators are responsible for clear and constant communication with drivers. Dock board or bridge plates shall be properly secured before they are driven over. Dock board or bridge plates shall be driven over carefully and slowly and their rated capacity never exceeded. In some material handling situations, pedestrians and vehicular traffic are forced to share the same space. Many pedestrian accidents result from an operator's failure to comply with a basic rule of the road. Look where you are going. Look forward when traveling in a forward direction. Look rearward when traveling in a rearward direction. And look to the corners when in a turn. Pedestrians themselves are also often the culprit. Pedestrians are often not aware of their surroundings or not paying attention. In some cases, pedestrians have been injured because they did not understand that lift trucks cannot stop instantly, even though the vehicle may be moving at a relatively slow speed. In some cases, pedestrians have been struck by a vehicle because they failed to recognize that lift trucks steer from the rear and that there is a resulting tail swing in a forward turn. At all times, pedestrians have an equal responsibility to be aware of the traffic within the specific work environments, as well as the operating characteristics of powered industrial trucks. For additional training on pedestrian safety, please refer to Toyota's Pedestrian Safety Program. Electric-powered lift trucks can also brake by changing direction with the forward reverse control lever. It's called plugging and is a common way to stop. While moving in one direction, Move the direction lever to the opposite direction. The truck will slow to a stop and immediately begin moving in the opposite direction. This Class 1, 4, and 5 operator safety training has provided general instruction on safe lift truck operation and general safety awareness. 
Operators of powered industrial trucks must be fully trained and employer authorized for the specific class of lift truck they will use. Every job operation and every work environment differs from company to company and even within departments of companies and therefore it is ultimately the employer's responsibility to ensure the operator is properly trained, evaluated and certified. This satisfies only the classroom portion of the powered industrial truck operator training. You are still required to complete additional hands-on and evaluation training before becoming certified.